Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. We are a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, both sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. You can send your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your own personal situation. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Okay, this is episode number 64. We're doing kind of a Q&A roundup of voicemails and written questions. Um, I also have an update on our newest rental. We just finished the apartment in our mixed use building on Main Street in our little town. It took Yay. us... Yeah, it's like... It's one of those things where you're like, we're almost done. Now we got to put the beds together and then we need this chair and then we need another chair and then we need a rug and we need a lamp and then we need these other things. And you go to Ikea like six times and you're like, we're still ordering stuff on Amazon <laughs> where you're, I'm like, oh, I need a hairdryer and an iron and an ironing board. And like, you know, th there's so many things that go into it that you just forget about until you're <laughs> right down to the wire you know i feel like you're birthing a building like you're birthing an airbnb part uh, par apartment that's what it feels like and that's what it is you know so how how do you keep track of all those things so when you buy a hair dryer or you you know whatever buy a iron do you have a spreadsheet that you keep that tracks all of that oh i am not that organized at all i mean We'll have a list, you know, I'll, you know, before we go to Ikea or wherever, because Ikea is actually quite far from us. It's two hours. So we have to make a whole trip to do that. So we will just have this list. We need this. We need this. We need a side table. We need this. If we don't get it this time, we'll go another time. If we're too exhausted, you know, like we spent too much this time. We filled up the truck. We can't hold it all. You know, you just keep a list, and once you've got those things, you're kind of like, okay, I don't have to think about that again. You know, with things like the hair dryer, I mean, you know, I I just know I need like I didn't remember that I needed a hair dryer until just like two days ago, and I just went to Walmart. I was like, okay, this thing's nine bucks, whatever. Like, I'll get the one that looks okay. Um, you know, you just kind of like go through it or, you know, people start staying there and they're like, oh, we need a such and such. And you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I should have known that. But um, also, like I, I took photos like I use my nice camera. I have a wide angle lens. It's not a fisheye lens or anything, but it's like a wide lens. It's it's basically for real estate, you know, it's like, so you can take a picture of a whole room and it doesn't look distorted. It looked great, actually. It was the first time I used it. And, you know, there are things in certain rooms where I'm like, ah, we totally need a lamp in that corner. And like, it just looks like there's nothing in this room when I took a picture of that corner. So you, you kind of take note of that and you just keep going. And I can retake photos. That's it. That's a great thing about having your own camera too, your own setup. You're like, okay, once I get everything settled in this room, I'll replace that photo. Well, and it's so glaring, right? It's like you're almost like staging your own house. I mean, that's the thing. We actually had a friend who came down to stay for a couple weeks to kind of like test drive the, um, we've done that with every house. Actually, we've had people stay to test, kind of test the the space and make sure we have all the kitchen stuff they need and you know wine openers whatever you know i staged the apartment before she got there number one so that it looked nice but number two so that i could take photos and like see how everything looked you know it was like someone's coming down i'm staging it i'm taking photos and it just has to get done mm -hmm. So it's kind of a nerve wracking time when you're like, does everything look okay? You know, I'm like ironing the duvets so they look perfect in the photos. <laughs> you know, it's it's exhausting. It was like the day after I like couldn't get out of bed. I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, it's so much work. Yeah, it's so much work. But um, but it looks gorgeous. I'll, you know, once 
we still have to write the listing. Like I put all the photos up. I made a title. Jay's writing the text and putting all the stuff in. And hopefully by the end of this week, it'll be up and ready to rent within a month. Because we're actually, our friend's staying there for a couple weeks. And then we're going to go away. And then once we come back, it'll be like open. So we're excited. That's that's the little update. I'm so excited for you guys. Yeah, I'm excited too. Ugh, tired. <laughs> I can't. Like for us, we're just like, let's get this thing rented. Let's make some money. <laughs> I know you're ready. Well, and maybe also it being in town instead of out in the country a little bit more might have a longer rental period than just the summertime. Yeah, it might. And what's great about it, too, is, you know, we were a little bit worried, like, there's no backyard, there's no mountain views. But our friend has a dog who's super active. And there's a little walking path. It's actually a couple miles through the center of town along the creek that's like right next. It's the Greenway. And it's amazing. She like wakes up in the morning, brings the dog for a walk. The dog loves all the birds and like the ducks and it's chasing everything (laughs) in sight. And Um, And then in the afternoon, evening, she takes another walk along the other side of it. And she's like, this is amazing. This is like so nice to have. It's great. I'm like, okay, okay, (laughs) we did the right thing. You know, it's working. Right. And you yourself have never stayed in that apartment. So why would you think of that? And you don't have a dog. So it's like it takes friends and family and guests coming to stay to actually like bring out those features. Absolutely. So, so far, so good. Um, She seems to love it. We've hung out there and had dinner and the kitchen seemed great and we had everything we needed. So I was like, okay, (laughs) it's looking good. You know, that is such a good pro tip in terms of um, having friends and family come and stay before you open it up and just like do a test run. I know you've done that in every single Airbnb that you've had. I've stayed at one of your places uh, right before you open it up just to give it a test drive. I I think that is such a good, good way to open things up. Yeah, and she actually had a great suggestion, which now I think everybody should do is and now I want to do it at every house. She's like, what I really wanted was um, a charging station because she's got like an Apple Watch, a phone, an iPad. She's got like everything, right? And now with families and stuff, it's like the kids have the iPad and then your phone and your whatever. So they sell these things on Amazon. They're like these little charging stations where, you know, you plug it in and then it has all these USB ports and you can just like put random like an Apple one, an Android one, a little Apple Watch one or whatever sticking out. So people, you know, they can just come in the door and like plop their thing down and charge it while they're making dinner or whatever. So I think we're going to get one of those probably for every house. I was like, that's kind of a brilliant idea. So you're not like, oh, I got to plug my phone in upstairs in the bedroom, wherever it's like in a common area. I was like, that's a great idea. I, I didn't even know those existed. That's really nice. I want one for my own house. So yeah, it's stuff like that that's great when people are test running your house. You're like, oh, that's like so many times I've had people make suggestions and you're like, yeah, that's great. We're totally going to do that. Um, That's a good segue into our pro tip. So this episode, we're really uh, focusing on people's questions and people's comments and suggestions. And one of the pro tips was something that you wanted to add about guests messaging you or leaving suggestions. Yeah, so something we do when we, you know, say basically goodbye to a guest is, you know, we'll say, hey, you know, give us any suggestions or tips or whatever that you think could improve the house because so many things that people have given us tips on, not even like, oh, this was broken or whatever. They're just kind of like, oh, I I think it would be cool if you did this. You know, like one person uh, a couple of years ago was like, oh, we really wanted to use a crock pot. And I'm like, ah, especially for the fall and winter, like it's crock pot. You can get um, a smallish, you know, medium sized crock pot. Just one of those ones where you're like low high, like it's not an instant pot. They're like 15 bucks at Target or Walmart or whatever. So we got one for each house. And I'm like, that's a great tip, you know, things like that, where I'm like, I didn't think about it because I have one at home and I don't think of, you know, people doing that at a rental. But if they're coming for Thanksgiving or for the fall and they want to make like whatever stew, 
So, you know, things like that. So, so the last, the last, one of the last guests at one of our houses was like, this is so embarrassing. And Jay was so mad. They were like, uh, your sheets in this one certain bedroom are looking a little pilly. And it's really bad because I'm like super stingy about sheets sometimes. I was like, I knew they were pilly and I was trying to like use them for as long as possible. And I knew that they looked like a little bit worn. And Jay was like, get rid of them. Like you got it. They cannot be used. Like if people are noticing that and saying something, no, I should have noticed it before, but I was like, no, they're still good. They don't have a stain on them or anything. You know, that's, that's the balance between being scrappy right and been and being like high end it's like how far can we push it until it's like (laughs) too scrappy yeah and actually that pushed me into getting rid of a bunch of sheets that looked a little bit on the edge and we this is probably like a whole other episode but we rearranged all our linens got rid of any pillows that had um like we were having this thing where the pillow cases were unorganized because like when you buy an Ikea duvet cover, it comes with two pillow cases and then we would use two white pillow cases, but it was so chaotic because it was like, if Jay was packing the linens and he didn't see like the two pattern ones that went with the duvet he got, it was just like chaos. So we were like, we're getting rid of all those pillow cases. We're just doing white pillow cases, period, end of story. I literally had to buy 70 white pillows. Like, that's how many I needed for all three rentals. Yeah, I did the numbers. I was like, um, we kind of need like 68 pillowcases. <laughs> so it's been like a little chaotic in my laundry room because I was like, I have to get rid of all these patterned pillowcases from Ikea because I have basically like whatever, 50 of them <laughs> or something. So was that painful? Was that a painful so, decision? It was so painful. I almost like couldn't do it because I was just like, my brain's not working. Like I can't figure out how this is supposed to be economical or efficient because it costs so much money to do. Like it's so much money to buy that many linens. But the great thing is we reorganized our linens. So it's by size. So you're like all king duvets, king fitted sheets and king flat sheets and king pillowcases are here. Like they're labeled on a shelf. And then anything queen, because we have a ton of, we have five, one, two, yeah, we have five queen beds and we like to have three turnarounds. So that's 15 sets of everything plus, um, all the pillowcases and there's like four pillowcases on each bed like I just had to do like all this math I'm like okay how many is that yeah it was chaos it was like we had to take everything off all the all the uh shelves and then reorganize them some of them you're like this has a stain we have to get rid of it now we have to get another set because I don't have enough you know um but what it does is and this helps me a ton Now anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, it could be you, it could be Jay, it could be me, it could be my helper, it could be my cleaners, they can go in there and be like, okay, I know there's a queen, a king, and two twins at this house, and you can just grab your stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not like, I had it organized like, this is the upstairs bedroom at this house, you know, that was that shelf. It's crazy, yes, right. Which for one house is not a big deal and actually for two houses it was kind of okay but when you get into three rentals with three bedrooms each you're like this is not sustainable number one i'm driving myself crazy trying to be like where which house was this for i forget so it was like one of those moments where you're like this is so painful and i it took me like a month to actually do it because i didn't want to do it i was because i didn't want to fit like I didn't want to like mentally figure it out I was like I don't want to have to like figure this out because it works so far but it doesn't work when you put a third rental into into rotation like it just doesn't work so that was last weekend (laughs) so it's just like so not only were you bringing an apartment online but you reorganized all your linens 
We had to because I just was like, this isn't. And I needed help. I was like, I cannot pack all the linen bags and do all the laundry by myself. Like, I like Jay would help me, but I I mostly was like, this is my job because basically I'm the only one that understands it. <laughs> So now it doesn't have to be my job because it's so easy to explain. You're like, yeah, this is the list. These are the rooms that you need to pack. That's it. That's great. It's like make it so it's you can delegate it. Exactly. So I mean, if you have cleaners, you should be able to. I mean, I know you both do the laundry, but it should be delegatable. Yeah, absolutely. You have to have a system that if you are absent from that system, it can still work because it's not sustainable when only one person understands the system. Yeah, so exactly. That was a pain in the butt for sure. I was like, I don't want to do this, but if I don't do it, the third rental is going to be chaos. So I did want to ask you about a little pro tip because you texted me the other day and oh you were my like, God. um, there's like stains all over my duvet from my last guest and I don't know what happened. So the bummer is that I bought a new duvet. I mean, it, I thankfully I didn't buy it new, new. I actually bought it used. Um, but I bought a duvet and I was excited about it. And I actually only put that on the bed with a top sheet because it was so hot in Boston, um, that I was like, I'm just going to use this and not even cover a blanket. Um, so when I got back to my apartment after someone rented it, everything had been washed and stuck in the dryer, which was unusual. I didn't ask them to do that. I actually prefer guests don't do that because if there are stains in them, then they get kind of baked in. So at first I was like, oh, I guess that was kind of nice of them. And then as I put the duvet back on the bed, I realized it was super stained. So I think what I'm going to do, your suggestion was to soak it overnight in OxyClean, which I think is what I'm going to do. But I was, it was one of those moments where I've never explicitly asked a guest not to clean sheets, but I sort of wanted to, you know, it's like, what do you do when they like are trying to be nice or they like stain something and they want to like throw it in the wash, you know, but it was like, wasn't helpful. <laughs> right. You're like, you actually made it worse because you put it in the dryer now. But the, the, the good thing is, honestly, I have I have done this before where, yeah, you don't notice a stain and you wash it, and you dry it and then you go to fold it and you're like, ooh, that's a bad one, you know. But OxyClean, if you have a, a soak, you know, mechanism on your washing machine, or if you just start a wash with like a couple scoops of OxyClean and you, some washers, you can just press pause. Mine allows you to just press pause and leave it overnight. Um, I have cleaned the craziest stuff with that where you're just like, this will never come out. And it does. Um, so one more thing uh, that happened over the weekend was um, I was we actually had to clean one of our houses and um, uh, our cleaner was out of town and I was having trouble with the curtain rod. I have this like tension rod, but it was it's like a curved tension rod. It's really like not great. I don't know. It's a cheap one. A curved tension rod just like did not was not working. It 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 gets all weird like the the curve goes down so it looks like a smiley face. You're just like this is not how it's supposed to be, right? So I was adjusting it and it fell down and I had Jay help me kind of, you know, wiggle it back in place and tighten it. Inevitably, two hours later, we get a phone call from our renters who are rushing to all of them take a shower to get to a rehearsal dinner. And they're like, the shower curtain rod fell down and we cannot get it to stay. And we all, all four of us need to take showers before this rehearsal dinner. And, you know, Jay and I are eating dinner and we're like, we have to go down. Like, what can we do? Uh, we have to go down there and try to fix it. But I didn't have time to, like, go buy another curtain rod or whatever. So we go down there. You know, we, we live, like, 10 miles down the road, which is fine. Um, and I have a little, like, hex set. I, like, unscrewed it and, like, put it back up and screwed it back in and tightened it as best I could. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, they're really 
sweet and cool. <laughs> the next day, they're like, it fell down again. And we're just like, we have to go to Walmart and we will get a straight tension rod and just, it doesn't have to be fancy. Like, it's just going to be whatever. It's just got to work. And thankfully, just a straight tension rod is fine, you know. But it's one of those things where if you're having trouble with something, just like those sheets where the people were like, this thing's like a little wonky or whatever, just replace it. Like, the moment you see something being wonky, like the moment I saw those, you know, the tension rod like turning the wrong way or whatever, get rid of it. Because you don't want your guests to be like, this fell on me, which is exactly what happened. They were really sweet about it because we were like, we're so sorry, you know, we'll come right away. That that gives you a lot of credit when you're like, we'll come right away, you know, which you don't want to do, but you're like, what else am I supposed to do, you know? But anytime you notice weird wonky things, replace them. Buy a better one, buy a temporary one. What Like this one's basically a temporary one. Like I'm going to buy a nicer one. Like I just got a white tension rod. Psh, and it works and they're fine. But <laughs> you just got to remember, if you notice something weird, just fix it. That sounds like such a nightmare. It's like those moments when you're like, oh my God, that's really inconvenient for them. And we're going to do our best to like reconcile it. Right. And we did. But, you know, it's one of those things where we should, I should have fixed it months ago, but I was like, it's staying, you know, it's fine. I don't have time, you know, whatever. No, make the time, you know. Okay, now that we've chatted forever about our Airbnbs, um, we are going to play a voicemail from Brittany. Hi, Ryan, Jay, and Ashley. My name is Brittany. I am a new listener, but I've already blasted through almost all of your podcasts. My husband and I are potentially buying an Airbnb that's about two and a half hours away from our house. We live in Jersey, and the house is an 1800 schoolhouse uh, in the Catskills of New York. I was hoping to give a little feedback. Um, I would really love to hear some episodes um, from some other people talking about operating an Airbnb from afar. I know that you guys are very close to your Airbnbs, so you have a lot of control over them. Uh, but we are going to be two and a half hours away. Also, would love to know more about the financial breakdown of running an Airbnb. So maybe if you could give like some examples and talk about like the costing. Um, I know you guys talk about some costing general, but just how you balance uh, the mortgages and the incoming money and then the expenses every month. Do you use an Excel spreadsheet? I haven't heard you guys talk about Instagram and social media that much. If you have any insight on having an Instagram attached or Pinterest page, which is what a lot of people are seeming to do these days. Just want to drop in and say hello. Okay, thanks. Bye. Let's start with the first section of her voicemail where she's talking about operating remotely from where you live. So that's that's a whole thing, right? I don't do that. You kind of do that right now. So what's that all about? So I do operate my Airbnb from afar at the moment. Uh, I live out in Western Mass, uh, mostly full time. And I am about two hours from my Airbnb, which means that I have a cleaner who does my changeovers when I'm not there. Um, I also have a neighbor who will stop in if something arises when I'm not there. Um, and, you know, for her, it's more like I'll ask a favor or she kind of knows that, you know, there might be people in the house. And if something happens, you know, I have someone who's kind of like on site, so to speak. Um, but what I try and do is I time my Airbnbs to just be Friday through Monday. So my cleaner knows she's coming in on Friday and somebody's leaving on Monday and she comes again on Friday. So for me, that works. Like I basically only have people on the weekends. Um, if I were to do Airbnb during the week, I would hire another person to do changeovers, but not deep cleans. So like I have someone who does basically a deep clean for the weekend and then I would have someone else do the like basically the week changeovers. So 
that's generally how I operate it from afar. Yeah, basically, like you need someone depending on how booked you are, how booked you want to be. Like Ashley's saying, um, you might just want to do weekends or you might want to book it all the time when you're not there if it's your second you know, weekend home. That's just what you need. You need cleaners, you need someone to do the laundry. It might be your cleaners, it might be someone else. And you need a maintenance person. Just like I was saying, a curtain rod falls down and they're trying to take showers to go to a wedding rehearsal dinner or a wedding or their wedding. You know, you have to have someone who's willing, a neighbor or whoever, to just be like, you got to go right now. Um, you have to be on call or soon. Um, or you're going to get a bad review. I mean, that's just, and look, we are working for reviews. That is what we are doing. That is why I went to the house in the middle of my dinner to fix the curtain rod. That is why Jay went over to the house to give people extra blankets the other night because they had an infant that needed a blanket. Like it's a pain, but you're like, this is my business and it has to happen. And having that person on call doesn't need to be the person who's doing your changeover or doing your maintenance. So you could have a neighbor who, you know, you throw them some bucks a month to be the on-call person and they know that, you know, it's like being a doctor. (laughs) No, it's not. It's not like that at all. But it's like they know that they have to be there when needed And it's not like, oh, they're on call, but they're actually away for the weekend. Like those things don't work. So the on-call person doesn't have to be your cleaner or your changeover person. Right. And you are paying those people. Like never is anyone going to do you a favor because they will just be on their own time. Like whoever your maintenance person is, don't be like, oh, it's a neighbor who does it for because we're not. No, you are paying them. Like there, there must be an agreement where you're like, I have a maintenance person that if there is a serious like plumbing problem that I can't handle myself, I call him and he charges me $30 an hour. But you know what? He's worth he's worth his weight in gold. Period. End of story. Like he's fixed so many problems at the last second where I'm like, yeah, the plumbing in the in the kitchen just stopped working. And, he, you know, like, oh, what am I supposed to do? So, yeah, you pay those people and that you're hiring people to do those things. So that's how you run it remotely. Um, Her second part of her questions was asking about financials. And for me, this is this is a full time business. So I mean, I do my numbers every month. I I do online bookkeeping. It's called GoDaddy bookkeeping, but it's like Quicken or it's like QuickBooks. I mean, that's where I'm keeping track for all of my companies because I have like three companies right now. Um, That's where I'm keeping track of the money coming in and my mortgages and my expenses and my utilities and paying my maintenance guy and paying my cleaners. So yeah, and I'm reporting all that. You know, you are... I, I report that on my taxes as as rental income. So yeah, I'm keeping track of every single expense because I'm expensing all that. You know, like I pay my cleaners and then I'm like, I didn't make that money. So that's super important to do. Something I wanted to add is that um, the finances are always changing, particularly because if you're using Airbnb, the platform's always changing. Like I took a break from Airbnb for the last like, basically a year. And then I just started up again um, for a section of time. And the fees had all completely changed. People get charged a platform fee now, and that wasn't the case before. Um, And now Boston is charging lodging tax. And so, so now my fees for guests has to be totally different. Um, and now I also have to, I have to register my Airbnb in Boston. I didn't have to do that before. Um, so the platform's always changing. The fees are always changing. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes to assess year to year how that's going to look. Um, especially if you take time off or if you're seasonal, So that's similar where um, for our state of Virginia, um, Airbnb just on July 1st, so this is just a month ago for me, they started remitting the tax for all the Airbnbs in Virginia to the state. So I was collecting it myself before and I was um, remitting it to the state myself. I was filing taxes at the first of every month, every single month. Um, but now I actually closed my tax account with the state because I was like, I, I'm not collecting this anymore. Airbnb's collecting it and paying it for me. 
So, you know, it's things like that where you're like, okay, I have to keep track of these things so I don't collect it twice. You know, I'm not collecting it or paying it twice. Airbnb is always already paying it for me, you know, and that stuff changes all the time. So, yeah, in terms of financials, you are reporting this stuff on your taxes and you are taking expenses. So your maintenance person, your cleaning person, supplies, linens, furniture, any Honestly, any renovations you do, I mean, that can be on a depreciation schedule. So you're like, I spent $20,000 to make this business property better. And so I'm going to put that on my taxes and take, take, um, you take a depreciation over time, depending on what you figure out. Um, also mortgage interest is a is something you take off on your taxes as well so obviously i'm not an accountant but you should talk to your accountant about what you can take for expenses as well uh the thing i was going to add was that they have a new tool now on airbnb where you can preview uh what you're going to have as your takeaway and what your guest will be paying in total um, they didn't have that before. So in some ways, once you get your listing up and going, it's, it's a little bit helpful when you really start getting into the fine details of tweaking your pricing. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I have way less things that I can deduct because I live in my apartment. So my accountant was like, how much of a percentage of your total apartment is your Airbnb room because I got a bunch of new appliances in my apartment and I was like, can I deduct that? And he basically said no, because I live there. Huh, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you couldn't deduct a percentage because basically that um, that's the same as if you have a home um, office where you're like, okay, my home office is 300 square feet. So the percentage of utilities that I use for that office is like, whatever, like 30% or something. Well, so that's how he, that's essentially how he did it or how he, he described doing it. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't wholesale write, you know, big things off basically. Right. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Like we, we have entire buildings that are by themselves. So the utilities on those buildings every single bit of that utility is being used for the business. So it's easy for me to be like, okay, that internet bill at that house that is a rental, that whole bill gets deducted off, you know, ex- that's that's an expense. But right, so if I was just renting a room like you, they'd be like, well, it's only a percentage of your internet bill or your utility bill or whatever. So yeah, that's exactly. a really good point. I yes. didn't know that about Airbnb, that you can preview the price now. I'll have to look at that. Yes, it's a new tool. Because they just started doing that platform fee because I I never noticed it before and and I've actually heard people complain about it on Reddit. They're like, "What's this platform fee?" I have to say, so our mom just came out here to visit and was looking at Airbnbs and I have to say that because of the platform fee, she decided not to rent an Airbnb and she decided to go to a hotel. Because she was like, hello, like, the hotel's not charging me extra for a platform fee to like book online. Like this isn't, you know, so basically, instead of charging Airbnb hosts, they're charging Airbnb guests for platform fees, because it used to be basically free as a guest to be on the Airbnb platform, whereas as a host, a percentage was always taken out. And I I think it's it's working against them to some degree. Yeah, I need to look up what the percentages of the uh, booking, like, is it 10%? Because I know they charge hosts, I think they charge hosts 3%. So I don't know what it is. But you should look it up. I also don't remember them announcing that. But I'm pretty flaky about like reading through everything when they send out like an announcement. So yeah, it was significant when mom was looking into it, like for, I don't know if it was a percentage of her whole stay or it was something, but it ended up being like, it was somewhere in the fifties or seventies. That's, that is nuts. I wonder if people are, that's not worth it for me. Like I'd rather just get a hotel, which is so sad, right? Because that Airbnb host totally lost out because of the platform fee. Yeah, I got to look at that because I'm about to be traveling actually up to visit you in a couple months and a month, actually. Uh, and I need to look at Airbnbs in your area. So I'm going to see those prices as well. 
Yeah. And the other thing is with Boston, I had a huge occupancy tax added. If I do a preview um, of prices to see what guests pay, the occupancy tax was like $90. Wow. And I was I was like, how is that even I didn't I don't understand how that was calculated, but I was shocked. And I've noticed actually that a lot of Airbnb rentals in my area have gone way down with their pricing. And I think it's to offset all of the fees now. So anyway, I know that there are lots of other podcasts that cover this topic because it's like, I think it's been a big deal over the last six months. Um, But maybe we can look into it more. And yeah, I need to, I need to look at that more because that's, that's all that is really new. And I just think it's a lot of like cities and towns and counties that are pushing back on Airbnb. And, and I also think it's the hotel lobby too, because just what happened with our mom, she was like, well, I'll just get a hotel. Like I don't need a kitchen and I don't need to be in someone's house. Like I just need a room to sleep in, uh, you know? And so that's what's, that's what's going to happen. Okay. So the third thing that Brittany talked about was doing social media, doing Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook and stuff like that. I did start an Instagram account, but I just am so busy. I have a tag that I have people use. So I've been looking at that tag and people use it. So that's kind of its own thing. If, if people are following that tag or tagging, like they don't have to tag me exactly. They can just use that like hashtag. So that's great. Cause that's like self perpetuating, <laughs> but I just honestly like barely have time to look at it or do anything because just running these businesses takes so much time. So I'm really bad at social media in general. I think my opinion on that is if you have the most fabulous place ever, you know, like if there's something really unique about your Airbnb, like I I follow Instagram Airbnbs that are like in Morocco, you know, because they're just like so over the top gorgeous. Or there's another woman I follow who's a house flipper and she has gorgeous, gorgeous houses and she's always renovating new things. So I have a particular interest in, in her work. But I feel like unless your Airbnb is like just over the top gorgeous, I don't know if social media necessarily gets you any further except with your own friend and family circle or if you already have like an influencer account. Like if you have more than a thousand people already following you, great. Like post your Airbnb to your heart's desire. But if you have like a hundred people following you on Instagram, I'm not sure it's going to get you very far. Yeah. And the other thing too, for me was I'm getting enough bookings just by having all five star reviews, gorgeous photos that were taken by professional photographers, but now me. So hopefully I'm, (laughs) my photos are going to be good enough. But uh, those things get you bookings, you know, Um, and me having an Instagram account, was that really getting me bookings? Actually, not really. So I kind of just was like, I can't like Airbnb itself as a platform was getting me enough bookings that I didn't have to do anything supplemental, even in the winter. I mean, in the winter, sometimes I'm like, I'll post a little something just to like get people excited. But how can you tell like those metrics are it's like advertising metrics you're like did that make a booking i don't know because nobody you know they weren't like we saw you on instagram like nobody is saying that so it really is like how much time do you have and i have very little time other than like running my airbnb business running my ebay business and running my video production company like (laughs) i'm like i don't have time for instagram but um Airbnb itself is such a great platform that we get enough bookings that way. So that's just my thoughts. I like what you've done, Ryan, which is you ha- you have a lot of great content on there. Um, so if people find your hashtag or they find it through social media, it's there's fresh stuff going on, particularly because people are tagging it with a hashtag. So they're I doing would, the work for me. Basically. Exactly. So I would say there's no harm in having a little base foundation. You know, maybe you post you you get in there, you get on Instagram, you connect it to Facebook, you do like 20 posts or so, and then you 
uh, uh, you actually have the hashtag up in the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing, too, that we did when we first started Instagram. We printed out little cards. And I think I even printed like a little postcard and framed it and was like, this is our username. This is our hashtag. Like, go see what other people have done. And even last weekend, um, these people that messaged us, they sent us their Instagram account and they took these amazing photos. I'll probably I'll have to use them on on the podcast sometime. But it was just like they did these like stargazing photos, like a long. It was amazing. I was like, this is gorgeous. I, I felt, oh, I got to start Instagram again just because I wanted to like re repost their posts, you know, so people do use it. But. I'd rather that they do the work for me because I don't have, you know, at first I was posting every week and I was like, I don't know what to post this week. Like another picture of flowers in front of the house. I don't know. (laughs) You know? Exactly. Yeah. I really like how you've done it because you've set it up. You've set up a foundation. It feels like people actually use it. And it's not just like some weird like dead end that people don't care about. Well, I'm glad you say that because honestly, you're on Instagram more than like I literally stopped using Instagram a year ago. I don't even turn it I just it's like fear of missing out like I see all these cool people like from college traveling around the world and having babies and I'm like "Ah, (laughs) I just can't I can't handle it I yeah it's a lot okay that's it for this week's podcast thanks for listening to shampoo and booze at shampooandbooze.com as usual you can send us your questions with an audio file or written questions to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll always do our best to cover the topics that you care about and don't forget about our design and listing advice services we just posted our video of an example of our services a couple weeks ago so you can see that on youtube or on our blog and you can see our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session with us. Bye. Bye.